Hello guys, welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today I'm going to tackle the difference between entropy and internal energy. We're going to start off by defining the two things, so we're first defining the two things, defining the differences. Then I'm going to give you uh, different situations that might help you when solving problems on identifying whether you should use one or the other. And finally, I'll end up with a rule of thumb that you can use in case you're not really after understanding and learning this, you just want a quick way out, maybe for a problem, or if you have a test tomorrow or something, you just want, you know, just give me the answers. I'll give you a rule of thumb that you can use in most situations to help you out to decide whether to use the internal energy, <clears throat> the internal pH or the internal energy U. So let's jump straight into it. All right, so internal energy versus enthalpy. Generally they note uppercase U for internal energy and uppercase H for enthalpy. What's the difference? Well, internal energy, let's start with this one first. What is the internal energy? If we take a glass with a certain fluid inside, so long as the fluid is not at zero Kelvin, absolute zero, that is, then we know that the fluid is going to be made up of molecules, which are made of atoms, and we know that these atoms, they have some energy. Why? Because they're not standing still, right? Because this, the temperature is, as long as, again, as long as temperature is greater than zero Kelvin, then we know that these atoms here, they're going to be moving back and forth. So they're going to have kinetic energy associated with the translational motion that is going back and forth, rotational motion, and also vibration, right? So, so all those those uh, movements associated with kinetic energy summed up are going to give us the internal energy. In addition to that, we also have potential energy because we know that if we look at a um, an atom, we're going to have protons with positive charges and electrons with negative charges. There's potential energy between these two guys, and also between molecules, intermolecular energy. There's also potential energy between them. Okay, so if we sum up all these guys here on the microscopic level for a fluid, for instance, what we get is the sum of all that guy. If we sum them all up, let's do it like this. If I sum them all up, this is what we call internal energy. Okay, and the enthalpy, on the other hand, is defined as okay. This is definition, so enthalpy is defined as the internal energy plus PV. PV for pressure and volume. P for pressure, V for volume. This is what we call flow energy, right here. And you can understand this as such: if we have a pipe, if we have a pipe and we have a certain moving fluid. And we do a little uh, control volume. We do a little control volume here. And if you think about the following, how much energy does it take for this part of the fluid to move inside to this volume? So for it to move inside that volume, what we require is, as long as there's a pressure associated to this, it has to travel from where it is all the way until it fills this gap. We can call this guy uh, x, right? And we can call the diameter. You know, we're just looking in 2D. Okay, let's call this just um, y. Okay, and so there's an area here. Associated with this um, this fluid, and there's a length it has to cover. So if we take, we know that the definition of work, right? Work is defined as force times distance, right? So one joule, if you recall, one joule is how much energy I require to push one thing with a force of one newton if I push that thing for one meter, right? So force times distance. Remember that pressure is just pressure is just for, how force divided by area. So therefore, if we take the force and multiply pressure by area, that's going to give us force. So we can sub in this pressure times area, and if I multiply the area times the D, in which in this case here in our example is X, we're going to get a volume, right? So this is the same thing as pressure times volume. So the energy associated with the movement for, oops, the energy associated with the traveling of this fluid from where it is to inside our control volume is what we call the flow energy, okay? So it's associated with that guy there. So one thing that we can take from the definition is that, first of all, the enthalpy, because of this definition here, because enthalpy involves the internal energy, the enthalpy is always going to be greater than the internal energy. Right, so that's our first first conclusion. The enthalpy is always greater than internal energy. And that's actually useful in a lot of cases for you to remember. So let's jump into some cases. Okay, first case. Uh, first case I want to talk about. If you, you're doing a problem and the problem talks about flow energy, then you're going to be using enthalpy, right? Precisely because of the thing we just talked about. And then obviously, if it says there's no flow energy or if you can deduce there's no flow energy, of even flow energy, then you can use internal energy. That's the first case. Second case, if you were given CP or CV, CPs and CVs being the heat capacities, then you can also associate the, these guys to internal energy because the CP is actually defined as, defined as the change in enthalpy in respect to temperature on a constant pressure process. Okay, so it's directly related to enthalpy. 
So if you're given Cp, you probably need to find the enthalpy if you uh, need to define whether you need enthalpy or internal energy. Likewise, Cv is defined by the change in internal energy in respect to temperature for a constant volume process. Okay, so this one is obviously associated with the internal energy. And then depending on the case, depending on the scenario you have, maybe knowing this can save you and give you a hint of which one to use. The other thing that we take from this second case scenario is that because of this, because of what we found before, because we know enthalpy is greater than the internal energy, then we know Cp is always greater than Cv. Okay, and that, therefore, that's another thing you can use when you're using K. And if you're doing thermodynamics, you've probably seen K a lot. If you're doing K for um, isentropic transformations or anything like that, you can remember that K is going to be Cp divided by Cv because K is always a number bigger than 1. Right? That's precisely because of this situation here. Okay, third case, third case, third scenario for you to determine whether you're going to use one or the other. If you have a closed system, if you have a closed system versus a closed system, closed system versus a open system, an open system. If you are doing thermal, you probably learned about these guys right in the beginning, right in the beginning of the uh, of the classes, you learned that a closed system, like the name suggests, is a system in which you cannot exchange mass. No mass can, it's, it's closed, right? There's like a lid or something, but you can still exchange energy. So you can have energy going in or going out, right? On an open system, on the other hand, you can have both the exchange of mass and energy to, with the surroundings. So your surroundings, so you, for instance, uh, I don't know, let's draw a fire here. This is a, a pot in your stove, and you have um, energy going into the fluid there, the water perhaps, and the water is evaporating. So now you have mass leaving, you have water leaving your system, you have air taking the space of that water, so you have both the exchange of mass and of the energy. In this case here, if you have a closed system, you can associate this with internal energy. Let's put it over here on the side, internal energy. And if you have an open system, you can associate this with enthalpy. Okay? And drawing on this, on drawing on this third case scenario, I'm going to give you guys a rule of thumb. So that's what I promised. Fourth thing was, is a rule of thumb. So you, let's say you're not really interested in understanding this better to be sure. You just have a, you're stuck in a problem, you're trying to solve it, or you have a testimony or something. This is what you're going to do. Okay? Whenever you have a problem, Whenever you have a problem in which you have mass flow rate, so if a problem has a mass flow rate, so if problem has a mass flow rate, then you're going to use enthalpy. If your problem does not have mass flow rate, you're going to use internal energy. So if problem does not have oops, a mass flow rate, mass flow Right? You're going to use internal energy. Okay, another way to think of this, uh, or to write this, is if your, um, let's put it down here, do a little diagram here. If your mass flow rate, mass dot, equals zero, right? there's a mass flow rate, you're going to use internal energy. If your mass dot is different than zero, you're going to use enthalpy. So for this case here, you're going to use your internal energy. For this case here, you're going to use your enthalpy. Okay, so this is the rule of thumb you can can use to solve your problems. Remember the reason for this, if you want to, is because if you have a mass flow rate, you not only have the internal energy of those molecules going into your control volume, into your system, but you also have that flow energy associated with the movement of those molecules being pushed by a certain pressure. Hope this helped. If you still have any questions on this, let me know. If not, talk soon.